Honestly, even if they wanted to give this piece to me for free, I would still have really politely turn it down because I just see absolutely no use for this, for myself or for anyone else. Hello my friends, here we go again with another Hermes ranking video. Today looking at the best and worst Hermes wallets and SLGs. Because yes, Hermes creates some of the most divine pieces of jewelry, furniture, silk. They do everything under the sun and they do most things quite well. But if you want to get a true feel for what Hermes is all about and why they're so beloved and well known for their quality, you have to check out their leather creations. And what better way to dip your toes into the world of Hermes leather without breaking the bank than by picking up one of their wallets, which are pieces that if you choose the right one, you'll be able to use and enjoy forever on a daily basis. And that's what I would call a great investment. So if you want to hear my thoughts on some of their best wallets and my experience with some that are not so great, then please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and keep on watching. I have done quite a few ranking videos at this point, not only on Hermes pieces, but also on luxury brands in general. So if you have seen my ranking videos, I'm sure you know the drill by now. We'll be using the same tier maker app that I always use. And if you have not seen any one of them, I will leave my playlist link below for you in the info box in case you want to catch up. But let me walk you through the tiers really quick. I'm sure you know them by now, inside and out. But on top, we of course have must have. These are the holy grail of Hermes wallets and SLGs in my opinion. These are the ones that come highly recommended from me at least. And these are the pieces that I own and love. Then we have great investment. These are pieces that I might not go out of my way to get my hands on, but I still think that they would work for quite a few people out there. I like the design, I like the quality, but perhaps there are ones that are just a little bit better. And as always, when I talk about great investment, I'm referring to pieces being a good investment because you'll get your money's worth out of them, not because they are an incredible financial investment. At this point, there are very few pieces even from Hermes that I would consider a great investment, but that's topic for another day. Then we have acquired taste. These are the pieces that I do think would work for some people or some people would enjoy the way they look and feel, but personally, they are just not really for me. Then we have meh. These are the pieces that just don't do it for me and I don't think anyone would really have to go out of their way to spend money on these pieces, but they are okay. And then we have pass. These are the pieces that if I mess discontinued tomorrow, trust me, I would not cry. The first piece on our list is quite an iconic one. This is the Bastia coin purse, which I think a lot of people would recommend as the perfect first piece to jumpstart your luxury collection from Hermes because it is a piece that won't break the bank. It is really affordable compared to some other pieces from the brand. These start at around $230 if I remember correctly. But I personally never quite got the hype of the Bastia coin purse. I was late to the game. Most people buy this at the beginning of their MS journeys. I only bought my first piece last year just because I wanted to test it for myself to see what the hype is all about. And to be honest with you, I should have listened to my first instinct because I really didn't find any use for this piece. The idea is that this is a really simple design. It's made of one simple sheet of leather that is folded in around the edges to create this origami-like envelope shape. And it is almost a perfect square, so you should be able to use this to store coins, little trinkets, to basically help organize your bag or your pockets. And I just simply didn't find a use for this. I have been carrying this with me for over a year now, and I could count on one hand how many times I reached for this, which 
I have to be honest, I felt really satisfied after finding a chance to be able to use it, but for me, it was just basically a weight in my bag. So personally, I just don't see a purpose for having such a small piece in your collection in these modern times when we pay for everything with cards. Unless you really need something so small to organize, I don't know, hair clips, or as I said, tech accessories or face masks, I really don't see a point for this. So for me personally, it's going to be an unpopular opinion, but the Bustier is going to be just a meh. Moving on, we have a piece that is just as iconic as the Bustia coin purse, which is the Burn wallet that comes in quite a few different sizes. I personally chose the one in the compact size to represent the family of Burn wallets, selfishly because that is my favorite piece from the lineup. Is it outstanding? Is it, you know, anything spectacular? No, it's not, unless you find it in a really special skin or a really special color. But I do really enjoy it. I think it's a reliable style and I think it would be amazing for people who like a traditional wallet with different compartments, who want a little bit more than just a card holder. The compact size is a great size to go for because it fits everything, but it's not overwhelming. So even if you're a lover of mini bags, this is something that you could absolutely use. So for me, this is going to be a great investment. Next up, the Calvi card holder, which if I could control the order that these pieces show up in on the list, would have come right after the Bastia because they do share quite a few different characteristics. I have actually done a super in-depth close-up review on the differences between the Bastia and the Calvi. So I'll make sure to have that video linked down below for you and also up in the corner. If you have been contemplating either buying the Bustia or the Calvi, I would highly recommend that you check out that video of mine because I show you and share with you everything that you could possibly want to know about both of these pieces. But the idea is exactly the same as it is with the Bustia. The only difference is that the Calvi is slightly larger and it can do everything that the Bustia can, just even more, because this also fits credit cards and debit cards. I can't remember exactly how many of them, but basically a ton. I remember sharing with you the exact number in my previous video on these, but I think 16, 17, 18, close to something like that. So if you are someone who carries around a lot of cards, but you don't want a wallet that's large, that's heavy, this is a great piece to go for because it will just do the job of holding all your cards together. You can choose to use one of the sides for cards, the other one to fold in a couple of notes or even your keys. It's just a great piece to have in your collection. So for me, I'm not sure if I would say must have or great investment. I'm kind of thinking great investment just because it's not a piece that I think everyone needs in their collection. This next piece might be from the most underrated SLG family from Hermes, the so-called Click Collection, which you can recognize by its really subtle and simple yet beautifully crafted closing mechanism, which was actually inspired by the H padlock that you get with your Kelly and Birkin bags and with a ton of other leather bags from Hermes. I absolutely love this line. I don't see too much of it out there, but I think this would be an amazing piece to go for. Again, if you love smaller bags that are not known for being spacious, it comes in three different sizes, I believe. So the one that I chose here is the card holder, which folds out. And I think it has around eight card slots in there, but you could always double up. Then you have the wallet version, which I think is called the Click 12, which similar to the credit card holder folds out, it's just a little bit larger and you do get a pocket inside with a zipper in case you want to store some coins or some cash in there, you could. And then you have the Click 16, which is the so-called wallet on chain version of the Click lineup that comes with an actual removable shoulder strap. So you have plenty of options. It, just like with the Burn wallet, if you like this design, you can pick it up not only in different colors and leathers, but also in different sizes with different functionalities. Personally, 
I'm a big advocate of using credit cards and that's what I do. So I would go for the credit card holder and I would say that it is a great investment. It is certainly not a must have, but I think it is a beautiful design and it is incredibly well made. Next up a piece that was actually on my 2021 wish list, the Constance Pocket, which I actually picked up earlier in the year and have done a dedicated deep dive for you on this piece with how to style it, with all the specs and all the information that you need to know. And I also compared it to some other popular MS designs. So I don't want to go on for too long because you do have that video and if you watch that, you already know everything about this piece at this point. But I kind of wanted to give you an update on this piece just because it's been a few months since I did my deep dive and um, I have to be honest with you, I have not used it ever since. As soon as I got it, I started using it because I wanted to make sure that I can review it for you properly. So I really got a good feel for what it's all about and what it feels like owning it and using it. But since that review of mine, I just basically put it on the back burner and have not really been reaching for it ever since. So if anything, I think this piece would work quite well as a micro bag. If you love micro bags, this is a great piece to go for. But personally, the fact that you cannot really open it up, it is quite difficult to use and get cards in and out of, just doesn't make it the most functional for me, I found. So I think I'm gonna put this as an acquired taste, even though I've waited for this for a long time, I was really excited to get it. There is just another piece coming up that I love so much more. And because I have not been using it that much, I couldn't tell you that it was a great investment. I'm glad I have it, but um, I would highly recommend that you watch my deep dive before pulling the trigger and adding this to your collection because it is quite a pricey piece. If there is one SLG from Hermes that I don't get, this is the one, which is the so-called Diabolo card holder. This is a design that has been around since I think most of us were born. I don't know when this launched. I always see this around. It has been shown to me. I have played around with it. I tried it. And to this day, I cannot really understand the function that this piece is supposed to serve in your collection because it's basically this really tight leather pocket that can only fit one card and one card only. And then it has this clue to sell mechanism that you should push up and it helps to push your card out from the pocket, which I don't really see the point of considering that you can only put one card in there, which you should be able to just pull out. It just makes no sense. It's this really weird leather card holder that only fits one card and then it has this mechanism that should push it out, which some people would call revolutionary. I couldn't, I don't get it. I don't think anyone should spend their money on it. I have to give Hermes the fact that they always launch this in a huge array of different colors and leathers. But for me, this piece just makes no sense. Why would you need a card holder for one single card? Maybe if you have a security pass or something, but then I don't know, it just makes no sense to me. So for me, this is definitely a pass piece. Honestly, even if they wanted to give this piece to me for free, I would still really politely turn it down because I just see absolutely no use for this for myself or for anyone else. We have another classic design here, the so-called Dogon style of wallet, which has been around since 1997. And it is a really old school wallet. It kind of feels like an old school wallet. It's much larger and much more overwhelming than the wallets that you see out there these days. Obviously back in the day, I'm sure people had to carry around checkbooks and cash, etc. It wasn't quite as simple as it is these days that you can just basically go out with your phone because most people have Apple Pay at this point, so you don't even need a physical card. But this is a wallet that they continue to make. I don't really see too much of it these days in some fun pops of color. I think they stick to making it in some more classic shades. And I think they're really producing it just for the sake of it because it has become such a heritage piece. But if you want a large wallet that really will fit everything, if you have a ton of stuff to carry around, this might be a piece that you want to go for. The only design element that it has on the outside is the Clodesal closure. 
And then on the inside, you have this removable pocket with a zip coin purse, also with credit card slots, both on the wallet itself and also on this removable pocket. So you do get a two in one at the end of the day. It's not unbelievably expensive either. I think it is around the $2,000 mark, which for that kind of money, you do get a lot of leather. You don't get too much of a design element or an interesting aesthetic, but if you're all about beautiful pieces of leather, this might be something that you want to go for. It's no frills. It just does what it's supposed to, being a large wallet. But for me, it's just going to be a meh. There is nothing outstanding about it. If I had it, I would find a use for it, but I would definitely not go out of my way to spend money on this piece. The next piece on our list has quite a bit of history surrounding it, which is the 2002 compact wallet, which is actually part of a much larger collection, the so-called 2002 line, which not only consists of the compact wallet, but also of a couple of different bags in different sizes. And the story goes that this collection was originally designed and envisioned back in 1972, but at the time Hermes felt that it was too futuristic for the public to comprehend. So they ended up putting it in their archives and it wasn't until many decades later that they ended up launching it officially in stores. But personally, if you ask me, it was exactly where it belonged in the archives because this collection might have looked futuristic back in 1972. There is nothing futuristic about it now in 2021. I just don't like anything about this collection. I find the shapes outdated, the way they are put together. This mechanism on the front is just not cute. I mean, there's not one thing cute about it. It looks more like a cartoon caricature of a Batman logo than something that has to do something with their mess. Like it doesn't look luxurious or expensive in any shape or form. It doesn't even feel expensive if you ever get a chance to play around with these pieces. You know how most Hermes hardware has a really fun and intricate way of working? This one doesn't. It just looks and feels cheap. So for me, anything with this mechanism, anything with this hardware is just going to be a huge pass especially considering the price. This wallet, believe it or not, is just under $4,000, which for that kind of money, this piece should be nothing but perfection. And it's certainly not it. It is just a piece that I don't think anyone should be spending or more like wasting any money on. Okay, I guess we have another heritage piece coming right up. This list is definitely testing my RMS historic knowledge, but we have the GGLN Duo wallet here, which is of course inspired by the iconic GGLN clutch bag that was designed, I believe, in 1975 for someone marrying in to the Hermes family. And they were given this clutch bag, which is something that I have done several reviews on, so I'll make sure to link some up here and also down below for you in case you want to hear my thoughts on the clutch bag itself. But in case you're interested, it also comes in a wallet version, which I believe is around 22 centimeters long, whereas the clutch bag itself is 29. So it is definitely a little bit smaller, but for a wallet, it is still quite large. So again, I'm not sure how many people would need such a large envelope shaped wallet, but if you do, this is a simple, easy design to go for. I always say that for me, the Gigi line is just missing that spark, that magic that I want to see from Hermes for these prices, especially because this is one of the, if not the most expensive wallet that you can buy from Hermes, because you're basically getting this miniaturized clutch bag and then also on the inside, this removable full on leather pocket that you can take out and use on its own. It has a zip on top to make it a little bit more secure. You have card slots on this removable pouch and then the bag itself is pretty plain, just like the clutch bag itself. I think it is the fact that it has no hardware that I'm missing. That's why it's a little bit lackluster for me. And it is the same thing with the bag itself. So. Personally, it's not a piece that I would recommend if you like the way it looks. 
maybe look at the clutch bag because just for a tiny bit more money, you can actually get a proper bag. I personally wouldn't recommend this. I wouldn't say it's a pass because if someone gave it to me, just like the doggone, I could find a way to use it, but I would definitely not go out of my way to spend, I think over $3,000 on this piece. I am just realizing that we haven't found any must-haves and the must-have category is still empty, which is actually perfect because we'll definitely need a lot of space for these upcoming pieces. Because next up, we have my favorite, my holy grail, Kelly Wallet. If you have been with me for a while, you know how much I adore the Kelly Wallet. So much so that I have a dedicated playlist for the Kelly Wallet because I really don't hear too many people raving about this piece, even though it deserves a lot more attention. So I'm not going to go on for too long. I don't want to bore you with the details because I have several videos on this piece. I have one showing you what fits. I have one sharing with you the difference between this and the Kelly to go, which is basically Hermes' take on the wallet on the chain trend. I have one sharing with you all the different ways of styling it because this is truly a piece that will get you a lot of bang for your buck. Yes, they are expensive, but in my opinion, they are very much worth the money because the Kelly wallet, the original long version, is the kind of piece that you can use on a daily basis in every single situation. It stands on its own as a clutch bag if you want it to. It's not going to look out of place. It will actually look like a clutch bag. I am talking from experience because every time I carry it out, I get questions and compliments on it. You can use it as a crossbody bag Obviously you can use it as a wallet. It works great as a bag organizer. It just does it all. It just, there's just no limit to how much this piece can do. It's only your imagination and your creativity in terms of how far you want to take it. I just adore the Cali wallets. Yes, they are expensive, but they are so worth the money. So if you want to find out more, I'll make sure to have my Cali wallet playlist link down below for you to watch but it is just an incredible piece. And honestly, if I had to restart my RMS collection or if I was to start my RMS collection from the beginning, this is definitely a piece that I would start with. And I'm pretty sure that I did because if I remember correctly, my first larger purchase from RMS was actually my Kelly wallet in Epsom. And to this day, it's one of my most used and most favorite pieces. It is just an amazing piece and we don't have forever, so I'm going to stop talking, but um, yeah, the Kelly wallet is definitely a fabulous piece to have in your collection. This was not planned or intended that next up we have the Kelly pocket, which is the latest reiteration of the Kelly wallet line, but this system just sort of spits out the pictures to me in random order, I believe. I just upload them and then I never know what I'm going to get. But next up we have the Kelly Pocket, which similar to the Kelly Wallet, I have a dedicated video on sharing with you everything you need to know about this piece. But the most important information that I can give you is that if you're going to buy one piece, if you're going to take away one thing from this video, it should be that the Kelly Pocket is one of my most favorite pieces in my collection. I think if you have a Kelly Wallet and a Kelly Pocket, you have all your bases covered because there is nothing that you couldn't do with these two pieces. It's very rare for me to buy two of the same style from Hermes especially because you guys know I prefer everything in the color black. So once I own something in black, I'm set. I'm not going to go out and buy it in a different color unless I truly adore the piece. With a Kelly wallet, I did that. And with a Kelly pocket, I can definitely see myself doing it at one point. I just adore this piece, so I'm not gonna go on for too long again. I don't want to bore you with that, but the Cali Pocket, similar to the Cali Wallet, is just a must have in my opinion. I know, again, it's an expensive piece, but for what you get, I think there is no way you can go wrong with either one of these pieces. Do you guys remember how I was just talking about the 2002 line saying that if there is a piece that should have remained in the RMS archive, that was it. And the reason why I was so harsh on that piece is because this next piece that we have here is the so-called H-tag card holder, 
which is a collection that similar to the 2002 line was designed back in the 1970s, yet it looks just as relevant today as it probably did back in the 70s. I think it looks modern, streamlined, contemporary, fun, whereas the 2002 line cannot use any of those terms to describe itself. So this, on the other hand, I think is a fabulous design that has been around for, what, 50 years at this point. It hasn't been in production for 50 years. It is quite a recent drop, but its roots are from the 70s. And I absolutely love this collection. I personally am a bigger fan of the passport holder than the card holder that we have here. The card holder, I'm not sure how functional it would be because the idea is that you have this really simple pocket that only fits a couple of cards and then you have this H sort of cage around it, which you would use to encase your card holder. I personally would much rather pick up the passport holder with this design than the card holder. But I think if you're looking for something quite almost masculine from Hermes, this might be a great piece to go for. So for me, the h -Tech collection is definitely an acquired taste. If you love or need a larger wallet that fits everything, including the kitchen sink, this is the one for you, which is the Constance Long Wallet. I looked at this piece several times in the past and absolutely loved it. But even I found it just a little bit too big to be used as a wallet, even though it is a fabulous piece that will fit literally anything you need it to. I think it works a lot better as a standalone clutch bag than a wallet inside of other bags because it is huge. Just to put things in perspective, it is bigger than the Mini Kelly. I think it's just a tiny bit smaller than the Gigi Duo wallet, so I wouldn't say that it is the largest wallet that Hermes makes, but it is quite big and really, really sturdy and well made. So if you're looking for a Constance inspired clutch bag that you probably don't have to put in a traditional wish for, this might be a great investment to make because this is definitely a piece that you can use in a million and one different ways. So I'm a little torn between great investment because I can definitely see it being a fabulous investment and it being a must have. I think it just really comes down to whether you prefer the Constance closure or the Kelly closure. I definitely preferred the Kelly closure. That's why those are the pieces that I opted for. But if you prefer the Constance closure, I don't think you'd be disappointed with the Constance wallet to be really honest with you. It is going to be larger and more substantial than the Kelly wallet, but yeah, honestly, I don't think you can go wrong with either one. And last but not least, we have an interesting range to discuss from Hermes, which is the so-called Silken Collection. Now, there are quite a few different pieces within this line. I chose to use the picture of the long wallet here, but you also have little card holders and also little coin purses that all share the same characteristics of the pieces being made out of leather on the outside, but then the inside being made out of silk, which always makes these pieces really fun, colorful, and quite a nice pop of color to have in your collection. And a lot of people would recommend these pieces to be your first purchase from Hermes, alongside with something like a Bastia, just because they're a little bit more excessively priced, although that term is hard to use when it comes to RMS prices, even to these prices, just because not the entire thing is made of leather, it's only the outside, which means that these pieces won't actually last quite as long in your collection as something that is made of leather wood, because silk is not as resilient, as strong, and as durable as leather is. So these pieces have the tendency to start losing their shape, to form little holes and little rips on the inside. So even though you won't be spending quite as much as you would if you bought a full on leather piece, these pieces won't last as long in your collection either. So if you're buying them thinking that this is a great investment, they are not. They might be a fun piece to have in your collection, but they are not things that you'll be able to use for ever and then maybe even sell it if you no longer want it down the line and not lose money on it because these are definitely pieces that will show 
every single sign of Terran wear. So while this, I want to say, is a pass, it's just kind of a meh piece in my opinion. And my friends, this completes today's video on the best and worst Hermes wallets and SLGs. I really hope you enjoyed this and now it's your turn to let me know in the comment section. How would you rank these pieces yourself? What's your experience with some of these pieces? Which are your favorite? Which are your least favorite? Do you own any one of them? Would you consider picking any one of them up? I would love to hear your thoughts on Hermes wallets and of course SLGs. And if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here and I hope to see you back here very, very soon with a new video. Bye.